Hi. So, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's Han here with Mar. That's hi, me. Hi. Hi. And hi, Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Deborah, Kentucky. Hi, Cynthia. Fabiola. So, guys, it's Tuesday, and we are back with our uh, week, well, uh, Tuesday uh, session. <laughs> session. Uh, here with Marlene on Montreal Confections. And um, what's up today? What are we doing today? So today I am continuing in my stencil talk that I'm doing for the month of May. So today we are making silk screens. Yes, Ashley, that's right. I did see some of you guys and it's amazing. So I so, hope you can stay, stay from the live today. Yes. Exciting stuff. I'm going to run through the process and then... Um, you know, you guys can ask all your questions and that. Here, let me just pop up. So here's the products I'm going to be using. It's um, sold by Icon Art Stencils. And there's a discount code with um, the, the Montreal Confections, okay? And um, where's the ticker here? I'm just going to run this. Here, it's at the bottom. So I'm going to have the code running at the bottom and obviously you can watch this on replay if there's anything that you want to re-see. And as a reminder, I wanted to just say that reminder, it's, this is not sponsored. No. Uh, Marlin, right, you had purchased the, the silk screen. Um, well, I purchased it all and then I experimented with it all and now I'm going to share. So what is a silk screen? I took photos because it's difficult to show with the live camera, so I've done still photos. So look at this closely. You can actually see the mesh there. And the blue is actually a liquid that is coat the mesh, you see? And so the process, part of the liquid becomes solid and then there's another part that is, you can wash it away. Here you can see there's no bridges. The hole in that A, is held in place with the mesh, okay? So that's the the magic of a silk screen stencil. Hello, everybody, still people joining us. Hi, Sally. So I don't know, question one, is it easy? It is pretty gosh darn easy, Sally. I so have to say. Thumbs up. I have to say, okay, so first thing I wanna show you guys is the art. Now, usually when we talk stencils, pretty standard lines right you have to have a certain so like size of line look at that bunny look at the look at the shark imagine now you're going to be able to make this type of graphic with a stencil here look at the owl the owl is amazing i tested all those fonts there um so you can see the different like kind of sizes so you can achieve a crazy level of detail with these uh, silk screen stencils so where so here i'm just going to show you the the images so the these are the same stencil image that i showed you but this is actually done so the top one i did with royal icing i did it on paper because i was experimenting so i didn't make all these cookies all right and so you can you can see there the shark is at the top in icing. The bottom one is airbrush version. Here is that towel. The one on the right in icing on the other side is airbrushed. The airbrush icing again here for that bunny. Look at this goat. Amazing detail, amazing detail. So you couldn't do this with a normal um, stencil. Like it's just not possible, okay? So, so the, um, hold on a second here. So let's start from step one. So the first thing you have to find your art. So the art here, okay, just, just imagine you have your art as printed as black as possible and you're printing this on a piece of transparency like back in the day when we're in, um, in uh, school, anyway, in my generation and they would do those clear plastics on the, on the front of the class. So you're printing a black image onto these transparencies. 
So here I have the ones that I use. Let me just add my camera to them. Is it this here? All right. And you can see here, I printed a whole bunch of them. And you want to have it as black as possible. And the why you need it as black as possible is so that the black portions block the light from going to the okay? So the black portions protect the silk screen, the silk screen from being um, solidified by the UV light. So the UV light takes that liquid that's coating the mesh and makes it solid. So the black protects it. And that portion that's protected with the black is you're going to be able to wash it away. Okay. So any questions so far? Is that relatively clear? Can Jim, we are doing well. I hope you are doing well as well. So far, so good in that explanation. Okay, so now you've printed whatever design you found that you like onto the clear plastic, and you want to crowd, you can crowd them. So here's my example. You can crowd them as much as you want on the plastic because- I do, I do have a question. Did you print it using what? Your- I just print, so you can buy the, pl the clear um, sheets to print either with a laser or an inkjet, but it's too okay. you, you have to like when you buy anything, there's a different right inkjet or um or laser. um laser. Okay, and so you can crowd them much more than you would if you were making like a stencil, because this you can cut them out. So you can maximize your sheets, crowd them, and then cut them up when you're actually making the stencil. Okay. So here I've experimented. You can see I experimented with so many. I did a shark Santa. Oh, this one here, the bike. I was so excited. Look at a bike stencil. I mean, that's... That's really like, nice. Yeah, that's... I look at this it. one here. I mean, mm -hmm. all these super fine details. This flower. You see? This. So it's all really detailed stuff I was experimenting with to see if it would work, okay? So let's move on to the next step here. I'm going to move these. All right, so now you've got your images and you can cut them up, okay? And then you're just laying your, so you see the blue in the back there? That is the the silk screen that you have to keep in like a, a bag that doesn't, um, like it's protected from the light, okay? So you lay your clear plastic designs on top and then you rest a, another piece of clear plastic just to keep it flat so that when you do turn on that UV light, so that this, that it's really tight, so that the black really blocks the light from getting to the whole sheet, okay? Does that make sense? So you're blocking the light. So first thing here, let me look at my note. So transparent plastic sheet is, oh, oh yes, it's only printable on one side. So you have to kind of like feel it. One side is really slippery and one side has a bit of a rubbery grab. So you're printing on the rubbery grab side. Crowd your designs, print at the highest quality. You wanna print at the top, top quality so that there's the most ink possible, okay? Once you have your designs in position on the silk screen, you cover them with that plastic, like I said, to keep them tight to the silk screen. Yes. So would it be like the top top quality of like a photo? Like because it's like that's right, yeah. like on on a on a printer you usually have like I think the photo it's like I, the I picked I picked the black and white setting mm -hmm. and then I did top quality to get it as black as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you do the the exposure process for 35 seconds with the inkjet and 30 seconds with the laser printing. So it's very fast, okay? So once you've done that, you move to the sink and then you're just rinsing it out. So it says on their site to use like a jet kind of a thing, but I have a very powerful kitchen uh, nozzle and I actually mm -hmm. damaged the silk screen oh, like because it was so strong. It was so strong. Yeah, so you're just shooting it you know, and you get like, you're going to have a few duds. I did ruin a couple of sheets, you know, playing with it and figuring it out. But you can see here. 
this is cold water or is it it's it's warm water it's and you water. can see what's being washed away are the black lines that protected the blue sheet there you see so those areas get washed away simply with water there's no magic liquid that's it you're just using water to wash it away and that's that's it so the light solidifies that sheet everything that's exposed to light becomes a solid what was protected by the black is still washable you can wash it away any did you want to ask something i'm talking a lot you are, it's amazing i think everybody's just uh, kind of uh, soaking everything in there will be so if you make a mistake so if you do have a question just pop it in and we will get to it so if you want to check your print you can print on paper before you actually print onto your clear plastic right so that's a way to maybe avoid a mistake but um once you've created the silk screen there's not really anything to do if you've made a mistake you just have to redo it again you know so sadly it's not there's you can't really uh recover from that amber's only here on fridays you're going to have to settle for us <laughs> um all right so now we've washed it out here you can see it's like this is super fast there but you're letting the water run on it and then washing out your designs here i have a few i did not leave as much space around as i would have if I was actually making sense. Where, where do you, where can you purchase silk? So the silk screen right. products here, um, where's the picture that I had up? So it's all available right here. I'm, I've got it up on the screen. You see that icon art. Artstencil.com and you can use, you can get 15% off when using code Montreal Confections. And on this site, they have the material that you're using. Yes. Along, yeah. with, along with the machine. So here you can purchase a Try Me set. This is the set. It's 40, that's Canadian dollars, 40, mm -hmm. 43.88. And then they have this product where you brush this on and it makes your stencils food safe. If that was okay. a question that you had. Okay. So here we can look at the silk screen stencils. Here's the one you saw me um, use a wash out in the um, in the video. So you can see my hand there through. It's it's not completely transparent, but you can generally see. So you want to give yourself at least an inch around the design, you know, before you cut it up. Would you say that the material is similar or same to the material that you are uh, used to because you have no. some? No, it's, um, how could I compare it? I would say it's kind of like a windbreaker-ish. You know, like the, because uh, like back in the day, remember a Kiwi? Do you remember K-Way, those jackets? Do you remember that? It, it's like mesh kind of, but there is a, a coating to make it waterproof kind of like that if I had to describe it because when you feel it you feel the fabric on one side the other side it does feel very plasticky um so it's it's kind of um more pliable okay. than than if you were using um the hard plastic but you can see here if I zoom in there are no bridges at all the design it's is a beautiful beautiful design and you have used it with icing and uh, with an airbrush. Yes, I did. So I experimented with both. And, and in the coming weeks, I'll use it on actual projects. But today, I'm showing you guys the process of making the silk screen here. So this is actually um, the, the real way that silk screen is made. It's uh, the people who make t-shirts and stuff, they actually put a mesh in a kind of a frame and they put an emulsion liquid on it and they do this whole UV process. This, what's different is that it's a sheet. You don't need to put it in a frame and they become individual stencils. If you're silk screening like t-shirts, they leave them in the frame so that they can place them to squeegee the t-shirt or whatever product that they're making. Here, look at this bird. The bike mm -hmm. I was, 
here I thought for Father's Day would be cute. You guys know what goat is, the greatest of all time, with goat cookies for Father's Day, maybe? Here's that shark. So Dawn is asking, this is going back to the UV process. UV, uh, what, uh, what is the UV part of the process and where do you purchase the transparency sheet? Well, transparency sheets are available. They're all, it, everything is available at the that um, store. So they have everything A to Z that you need there. If you, um, you can't see it behind me, but I'll show it right here. I have the video. So it's basically a square that um, is, has a light on top and it's very like, it's 35 seconds and, and the, that's it. Like you're just the light, the UV lights, kind of like, I guess, nail polish. You know, the, the so show Melissa is asking, how do you, do you, how, how, do you need UV light or can you use sun? How so you, the thing about the sun, I think, I did not experiment with the sun, but the thing that happens with the sun is how do you block the thing from being a t like reached with the UV sun and set everything up? Do you know what I mean? Like that's so in my kitchen here with the UV thing, I can carefully position everything. But if I have to place everything out in the sun, well, it's already starting to cure. So aligning everything. So that's where the sun, you'd have to kind of like bring it out in a tray, I guess, and then lift off a shield that would protect it. So that's where, and then in the winter, that would become tricky. Yeah, it's not I, very I don't practical. know about that. So it probably, I mean, UV is the, you know, it's the sun, but it's just that side of it. Like you want to be able to kind of control exposure. It's kind of like back, you know, when you see the old time when they finished the photos in the dark room kind of a thing, you know? So it's just like being able to control it, you know? So here I have a video of me doing it with the airbrush, like using the silk screens here with the airbrush. So they are slightly tacky, the, the silk screen to hold them in place. And so in this particular video, I have them upside down because they were sticking to my paper and ripping the paper. So I have them upside down mm -hmm. and I separate them. And then in this video, it's... Um, me just cutting up that printed sheet so you can see there i'm just sectioning them up so that i can space them out on the silk screen so you can decide if you want to make your stencil six by six so they fit in your stencil holder but by crowding them on the plastic you can maximize the um you know how many you can fit onto the actual uh, sheet so again, here, just to show you, here's the shark. One is icing at the top. The bottom one is uh, airbrushed. Here's the owl. And you can really feel like the relief on the icing versions. I actually prefer the icing one. So you could, this could be a painted cookie, for example. Adult, you know, this little bunny. I see Kim has a question. I was like, so why do you need the sun? And would the sun lamp work? I don't, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know about sun lamps. You need the light, okay? So it, it basically cures the liquid that's coated on that mesh and makes it a solid. So you need the light so that that exposure happens so that you can kind of like, like it's really that, it becomes a solid. And then you can wash away the portions that were protected from the light. So you're essentially cutting with these black images that black images protect protect the like the sun from getting to the silk screen. I experimented with some like this here is a buffalo print, but it there's it's so small it probably work if I blew up the buffalo print, but this one did not work well. This one here was not a success. I have them here in real. This one, you see, I made a bottle and there's like a cute mermaid. I got it and maybe like the linear lines, like the buffalo or, you know, like the, that that's not something that maybe is ideal for the silks, you know, like. Yeah, but I wanted to see still, 
if I could, you know, because you can see, so I, you know, I experimented. Here it is actually the experiment, the icing version. So you can kind of see it. Very grunge. Uh, like yeah, it's not, but this one here did pretty good. I like it. This one it's here did pretty good. Different. I, do you think this would work on like chocolates and stuff? Oh, very, yeah. It, it certainly, if your chocolate was like, you know, it yes. gets thicker as it's, so here you can see they don't stain as much with icing. The airbrush I was using was brown and it, they did get stained. Here's the icing bee. Look at how cute that is. So you could basically ice, like you could add your template to the, to the cookie and then ice your sections. Like, you know, if you have the template on the cookie, you could ice the wings, let's say in uh, a light blue, do the bee in in yellow, flood the rest in white, and then lay your silk screen on top of your flat kind of colored icing. Or you can use your silhouette to make the silk the sections to airbrush the colors on. You know. Have you when you were airbrushing? I know you'll do another one with the silk screen, but um, how about um, how many can you? How many cookies, for example, would you say you could use the one? Silk screen on without like washing it. Is it that you have to wash it every time or when you're airbrushing? No, I think that you, if you have it in a holder so that, you know, because it is a little bit floppy, it's fabric. So ideally you'd have it in the um, holder. The thing that's different when you're, let's say, stenciling with icing is, you know, like when you're stenciling with icing with the regular stencils, sometimes you catch on these little kind of parts that stick up. Yes. So there's none of that because it's completely mm -hmm. flat. So you can kind of go and you really don't need a lot of icing. Like it's such a, a, a small amount that so you're very the stencil very doesn't very get low. Oh, you know? so it's like almost like when you scrape it off, it's like almost, it's, uh, it's pretty much empty. It's not like loaded with icing. It's empty. Exactly. Exactly right. That's it. Yes, Sally, I agree. It almost it looks like a stand. Yeah, I agree. So would it's, you say that um, I do like the color, like you use brown, but um, what uh, like would you experiment on doing? I know you had said about about the bee, but would you do different colors, or do you think like using one color is probably the well? I think that you'd have to um, like add like maybe create different stencils for each color because if you look at um actual like silk screen videos they do multi-color silk screens but you have to have like a little bit like the two layer stencils you have to have um right like you have to think about and that's when you can kind of combine your silk screen with your silhouette if you already have it to create the yeah. set like for example i'm thinking it's tech because like you said, they use this process to create designs on t-shirts. So I think yeah. it makes, it's very tacky. So when you using it exactly. on fabric or something, it sticks to it. So there is no way like you can, you know, so it's like flush throughout with the, with the surface you're trying to transfer uh, your design on. Well, she, the when you look at their site, like they do crafts, like they paint on, almost everything with these, with these right. and so since they recently only came out with that food coating um now it's starting to you know come out on so the food coating folks it's um this is this oops where is it sorry and i just was, oh, okay i just loaded this video mm -hmm. sorry um so this is icing so this is me doing the icing the icing version that's amazing that's it and you could use it, I think, also on fondant as well, right? Oh, yeah. This is the bike. So this is, see how thin it is? It's very, very thin, yes. And there it is. That's the bike. It's amazing. So I wanted to show folks. Okay, you might have done this. This one, it, it failed, but I'm showing it anyway. Yeah. Well, there is always, you know, there is a learning curve to it, obviously. And without the experimenting with it, you will not know what works and what doesn't. So. So you have to treat the, the, the silk screen once it's done with this glaze, correct? Yes. So you're just like painting it on 
and then um, you kind of wash off the excess. Because this, is, because this is powder, so you have to mix it with something else to... The, I, I bought it, but I didn't use it. Um, it says to add alcohol to it. Okay, and I guess so that alcohol and you paint over it, and I guess there is, I guess, it's the process that you have to follow to make it food safe. June, June actually dove in and got it. So June, uh, she's been playing with it as well. So she's been uh, also playing with her new toy. Yeah, Fabiola, they're fun. Um, go to Hans' um, blog, and she has her, her recipe there. On my blog, I don't know if you're look, looking for a, um, I guess, real icing recipe you're looking for. So there are a lot of them there. I have fresh lemon, I have meringue, I have fresh eggs, I have pasteurized eggs, I have a strawberry royal icing. So my blog is hanielas.com. Okay, Cynthia has a question. I may have missed it. Does, oops. Sorry, I was just putting your blog. I didn't realize it was going to take the other one away. So uh, I may have missed it. Does it need a stencil frame to hold it in place? Very good question. Thank you. Um, when you're using it, you don't have to have a stencil holder, just like for the regular stencils, you don't have to have it. But the stencil holder does make, you know, sometimes life a little bit easier holding. Um, but I did not, full disclosure, make actual cookies with these yet. Now, I was for the last four days only making stencils. I failed printing the plastic. Oh. I failed making some silk screens. I, you know, had some some um, struggles. It's, it's, it's so I don't have time to make cookies. Yes. So, guys, I mean, if you can, if you're not planning on maybe purchasing um, silk screen supplies, you can always support Marlin through coffee for all the information that she's sharing and all um, the things that you put into this. So my blog, how many times would you think you could wash and reuse a silk screen stencil? I, Karen, hi, Karen. So the thing that I encountered, the, the, so when they're drying, they're at their most fragile. So when you wash it and then set it down, you have to make sure that it's mesh side down and that the plastic tacky side is up. They stick to each other they stick to each other and to like before I had one drying and I thought it was fine. I put it on a plate Well, it literally stuck to the plate when I pulled it off from the plate. So I have it in the really? it, it damaged. That's interesting. Anyway, it completely fell apart. It completely, completely fell like the plastic lifted off. So they stick to each other. So they are. I don't want to say it's like fragile, but they're, you know, when they're wet, that's when they're at their most vulnerable. And you want to keep the plastic because there is a plastic coating to them and you can let them dry with that. But to tell you their longevity, I couldn't tell you right now because I haven't really used them. Mm -hmm. But um, after they've solidified, the water, like to wash them, seems to be fine. Like they don't, you know what I mean? Like, They've, and and if you look at their site, like this is something that people have been using for a while now. If you guys watch at all polymer video, I get a lot of polymer earring videos and everybody now is using these silk screens to paint their polymer before they cut their little earrings. And the silk screen is like 2.0 of stencils now. So this is, uh, it's been, you know, like most things, stuff exists in the world of crafts and slowly transfers to the world of cookies. And so this here, um, you don't have to add bridges to the, to the designs. You can get crazy details with the stencils. Here, look at the, um, this is in icing. I mean, yeah. that there's zero, you could never do this with a regular stencil. The goat, this is icing. You can feel the relief on it. And if you love the look of painted cookies, you know, like the watercolor, yes. well, you can come in and add the the core of your critter and then come in and add, you know, the details and give them a totally hand-painted look, but so much easier to do. 
it, it is more expensive than the plastic for sure. For sure. It's a different, um, you know, but let's say you were selling, um, to a company and you were doing a logo, well, you could charge them for the, for the, you know, kind of the making of their logo into a stencil. Yes, absolutely. So there, that's right. That's right. All you need is a printer. So you need to print your image and then um, you take that image to then make the stencil. So th it's the image that's making the stencil. And if you look here, they have the Try Me kit for 40, this is $44 Canadian. So American, it's under $40 and you can kind of get your hands on it and experiment. So if you do use the sun, like some of you were suggesting, just maybe put it all on a cookie sheet, drape it in something black and then carry it outside to do the UV portion. But mm -hmm. it's just tougher to control um, how long you'd expose it. I guess you could Google that. Maybe they, with the Try Me kit, do give you some uh, guidance with regards to how long you'd need to expose it with the sun. Bye, mm -hmm. Fabiola. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you might mention that you, in the beginning, that you also used, uh, you made some fonts. Do you have, I mean, sorry if I put you on the spot. Do you have- No, not at all. So I did um, make them into stencils, but I did not actually use them. But so here it is. I find like this is something, sorry, Kim, we'll get to your question. Sorry, I took it off. Um, I think like the letters, you know, that's something that's always like doing the monograms or the whole. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's something that I think to me, for me personally, that's like very interesting because it's just so perfect. So here, this is the points of the lines, you know, like when you do a line on a graphics program, you know, like the thickness, you go one, two, three. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The fatness of a line when you draw a box, let's say. Mm -hmm. yes. So this is this. So this is 20 and this is one. Mm -hmm. So at about um, six, the line starts being decent. Seven is, I think, your ideal. No, eight is the ideal. So at eight you're getting a nice, really fine line and it's very like pronounced and good, you know? Smaller than that, it's a, it's a bit fuzzy. And so what happens is when your printed line is so fine, well, the sun can kind of get under there, right? Because it's so, so, so fine. Pro like the protection is not as, as strong on that area. So yeah, at about eight points, the line starts being really good and then it gets fatter. And then here, the, these fonts, are really cookie sized you know like you don't write in big like, unless you're writing a name but you know these are yeah, cookie they don't too big but it's great that you are you know for the like because it's then it really like speeds up the process so much well speeds it up and does something yeah, really polished very, really, really, very very polished yes i mean you could i mean obviously lettering can be done with stencils but this is just you know different so kim um going back to your question a lady i bought some silk stencils from set as long as you take care of them properly they should last forever yeah so it's not a question but thank you for sharing that yes so if you stir i mean just like with everything you know if you take mm -hmm. care of it it will last for a long time sally uh, are you planning on demo how you do those with your icing yes i th this the letters I guess, well, I guess maybe, yeah, change it. Yes. Because I can just grab my icing and do it right now. I'm going Hold to on. do it now. Exciting. So, uh, yeah, she, Marlon is using, you can use royal icing and also, obviously, I guess other mediums, but we are working with cookies and food. So, Marlon has tested this with airbrush and royal icing. Now she's going to demonstrate how to use it with royal icing using the, uh, the letter standards. That is so, so I'm, I'm actually going to do it right on my work surface because, like I said, it sticks to the cardstock and I could work upside down with uh, the airbrush. But now if I it's the sticky side and I start working with um, with the royal icing. So I really don't have much of a perimeter because I didn't plan on using these for cookies. Right. This was the, just a making experiment. 
and and your I think for the for this um, would you say it has to be the same consistency as when you're using it with regular stencils or does it yeah you want it, you want it like paste ish you know because okay. if it's really wet it it gets under and it's just not mm -hmm. as um as detailed so now I'm just gonna lift it off so there it is nice. So this one here, it looks a little bit grayish, but it's because in the middle of the font, there's actually a little stitch in it. So I was just wanting to see if a font with details would work. But this one here, look at this fine one. This one here, I would maybe use bold instead. You know, just add a, a, a little bit of fatness to it, not necessarily making it bigger, but the bold feature makes the font a little bit like bulkier so that... Um, it gets protected from the light, you know? So, Lisa, we have another question here from Lisa N. So, Lisa is asking, on their on their website, it says, um, after it dries, to expose it again for two yes. minutes. Did you That's right, Lisa, yes. That's right. So, so yes, you're, you're supposed to do, again, the, um, the exposure process just to basically make sure that it's completely solidified to just you know really um cure the fi like a final final time to get that stencil nice and and um solid so there's their link and the discount code so sally you, you like that it seems um easier to handle it it see it it like hugs more. That's what I want to say. So let's say like sometimes, you know, the cookies aren't super flat. Well, this like hugs a bump, whereas the plastic stencils will kind of create a buckle, whereas this will kind of like coat the bump if you have a bump in your icing, which oh, sometimes okay. does happen. You have to purchase the other powder shown in order to make it feel safe. That's okay. right. So this, That's is right. The, this is the, the powder and just follow the directions. You said that it needs to be activated with alcohol. And I, I mean, I'm sure the instructions are there. So yeah, they, they, it comes like their package comes very nice. Like there's all kinds of like open this now and like all the instructions of how to and this and that I bought, I bought because for me in Canada, ordering stuff is, tricky from the state so I bought a hundred sheets because I knew that if I had to order again I'd have to pay the shipping again and um I figured better safe than sorry <laughs> I end up if you say oh that but I would have paid like again like the shipping is crazy for me here hello yes. Claudia hello everyone so if you're just joining us today Marlon uh, gave us the um, um, look inside of how silks Stencils are made, so if you if you missed it, don't no need to panic. There is a video for you ready to be played again after the live. It takes it takes a while. It's not like I don't think it's instant. Once we are done live, the Facebook and YouTube because we are streaming on Facebook and YouTube, it, it takes a while for it to process and then it's there for you at any time. You know you can watch it in a in a in a playlist live playlist. So Han, was there anything? that you had to promote before I um, I, <laughs> I do have something coming up but it's not ready yet but as always you can um, you can um, um, actually these are uh, also sweet ends and myself and Marlin here these are our uh, subscription um, baking club let's say so this month you only have I think two, two days if you all, all the May subscribers, or if you subscribe um, until May twentieth, you will receive also a, a small. Um, I don't have the picture here, but um, spatula set with uh, with a silicone brush set. So if, um, that's one thing, and I do have something coming up. So hopefully, we'll be ready maybe on Friday. And also a reminder: we have a schedule here. So this is a May schedule schedule and on a Friday, I believe it's the 20th on Friday. Am I correct? I'm like, so it is Friday is the 20th and hands oh, in the hot seat. Friday, I'm in a hot seat. Um, 
I had no idea what I'm making it, and Marlon will be there to um, to help me. I'll hold your hand virtually. And hold my hand, yes. And then I guess I'm on also on Tuesday, and then Amber will be back on if you are looking to see Amber um, on 27th of May. So this and then the final. Screenshot of it. You can take a screenshot of it so you have it so you know who is who is uh, decorating and what's going on. And if that's happening on Friday and Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, which is a New York time, okay? The 31st will be the last of the silk screen days, or not silk screen stencil, probably using the silk screen, but that will be the last, the last of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Check out their um They've got a lot of tutorials for different projects. I want to try to make um, some like tote bags and an apron. Yeah, I was going to say that I would love that as a gift for my birthday next year. Oh, no problem. Because <laughs> so many of us um, do events like, you know, so even for us, like if we if we do an event, you want to have your little, uh, you know, so I, yeah, I'm I going that. to... Yeah. Um, I'm going to experiment with that to see how easy it is to make a logo t-shirt or apron or some uh some stuff for you guys so that's it oh, thank yes, you so that's much true this thank is you. very true it doesn't catch when you're um using it yeah, like yeah. the little plastic yeah. sometimes will curve up i, I know i have a um snowf i am very uh, very into snowflakes um and so the stand, all the stencils I have, it's impossible to use them with icing because of all those small, very complex designs. And they always catch like my spatula or something. And then I actually like pretty much ruin the stencil because there's a crease or something. So, yeah. And then you ruin your cookie. Yes. Which is very annoying. So thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you again on Friday, so don't forget to tune in. And you. Uh, as always, you can find us also on Instagram, and if you're not following us on Facebook, give us a follow there, and uh, we'll see you on Friday.